Deep Purple in Rock was out, and the record company decided that there wasn't a single on it, uh, which didn't worry us one bit. We we were of the opinion uh, that in England, uh, singles didn't really matter for a band of our type. Um, whether we were right or wrong, I don't know, but that's just the, the, the stance that we took. Uh, maybe a little self-consciously, you know, maybe a little, no, we don't do singles, man, you know. Um, but the, the record company insisted and insisted, and um, so we were trundled into uh, a studio in, in, in uh, Queensway um, and told to write one. Well, you know, there's nothing less likely to make you write a single than that. Uh, you know, do it. You know, you've got four hours. So we went through all sorts of bits and pieces, found a couple of little odd ideas, but nothing that floated our boat particularly. Um, so we did what all proper rock bands do, is we went to the pub. And uh, we, uh, the drink of the day, I believe, was Scotch and Coke. Um, so we had a few of those. Um, weaved our way rather uncertainly back into the studio um, and <laughs> grinned at each other for a while. Um, and then Richie had said, again, what about that, you know that version of Ricky Nelson's Summertime from you know, the Gershwin song? And we went, yeah. He said, well, there's a little riff under there, which... But it just went around and around. So we kind of played it around and around, and it got very quickly very boring. One of us, who knows who, came up with the idea of putting a turnaround in it. Um, which made it a little less repetitive and boring, and then Ian Pace did one of his magical little things, where one of those drum breaks that he used to come up with in those days, uh, what are you doing there, Ian? I have no idea, it just fits, you know. So that was cool. Um, suddenly we had a sort of a structure, um, and we came up with, I don't know, about three minutes of this thing, and... Uh, it was rocking on quite nicely, and Gillen disappeared into a corner and came back with a set of utterly nonsensical lyrics, uh, which I mean, they mean absolutely nothing, as far as I can tell. I think at the time I do remember, in spite of the Scotch and Cokes, him saying, "This don't, don't mean a thing." I think Roger might have flown, uh, thrown in a couple of rhymes, um, and then we had Black Knight. Uh, spelling is important there. We never knew whether it was N-I-G-H-T or K-N-I-G-H-T. So it's, it's either about a, a chess piece or, or a particularly cloudy uh, English winter evening. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> 